Greetings, dear viewer, and welcome to Purposes Crossed, where I hope that people who are called by Jesus for different purposes cross paths and exchange ideas. In this video, we continue with our series of devotions on the Psalms, and today we will deal with Psalm 19. Psalm 19 is a beautiful song written by David about how creation sings the praises of God and about how noble the Torah is. But before we proceed to reflect on this moving psalm, we need to observe one thing. This psalm was written after Genesis chapter 3. It is a psalm written by a fallen human in a fallen world. In other words, no, regardless of your theology about what happened when the humans rebelled against God and were driven out of the garden, it must allow for the writing of this psalm after that. That means that even after the rebellion of humans, creation is able to testify about God. Creation created good is still good. Though fallen, creation has not lost its ability to praise its creator. I can imagine David herding the flock at night and gazing up into the sky to reflect on, its, uh, on the wonderful tapestry that his eyes took in. And when he did, he was driven to and inspired to write this psalm. David opens boldly with the confident assertion that the heavens declare the glory of God and the tapestry of the sky testify to being God's good creation. There is no doubt in David's mind about this, and we, who perhaps have been jaded by the advances of humans, should take a leaf from his book. The heavens declare God's glory. What does that mean? Now, David did not have the idea of constellations and galaxies that we do. What he saw was the sun during the day and the moon and the stars in the skies at night. He, like the other ancient peoples, probably thought that these were just some sort of lights placed by God on a canopy of the sky. But that was enough. Even with his limited understanding of the physical nature of the universe, David could glorify God when he saw the skies and the beauty it presented to him. Now we today have analyzed the universe to a far greater extent than David had. We can name thousands of galaxies and tens of thousands of stars. But along the way, have we lost our sense of wonder? Many scientists are atheists because they think that science has given a complete picture of what the universe is like, or science will soon give a complete picture. But this is like a difference between a person who gazes at Van Gogh's starry night and a person who analyzes the paint he used and tells us what its chemical composition is. It's like the difference between a person who savors a well-cooked meal and a person who subjects that food to various tests to determine its nutrition content. It's a difference between listening to Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto and being moved to the core and, an and analyzing the signals produced by the orchestra to determine what frequencies were present. It's a difference between appreciating something for what it is and determining how to replicate it by taking it apart. It is the difference between love and lust. Science that does not recognize that it is studying the outworking of God's love is only lived human desire to control. But when you re recognize that creation is an outworking of God's love, you begin to love it in return and love him through it, just as David does in Psalm 19. You then place yourself not as an observer of something that is inferior to you, that you can then control, but as a person in relationship with something that is beloved by God. And your whole outlook changes. See how David describes creation's testimony. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is here heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Their speech goes out, but they have no speech. They use no words, yet their voice go out. What paradoxical poetry! But it is only because David has come to love God's good creation that he can say such things or even think such things. And that is also why he is able in the same psalm to praise the Torah, Torah, for David, is not something that was an obje object like a rule book to be followed blindly. Rather, they refresh the soul, bring joy to the heart and light to the eyes. They are precisely what allows David to have a spirit of gratitude for life and the world around him. 
And that is because David saw Torah as a sign of an everlasting relationship between God and the people of Israel. Torah is trustworthy, right and firm. And Torah's trustworthiness reflects God's trustworthiness. Because of this, Torah is sweet and precious. In fact, because Torah has the ability to show David his hidden faults, he finds it all the more precious and sweet. This psalm reflects what many theologians have proposed, a view that God has given us two books, a book of creation or nature and the book of scripture. David pulls both of them together in this psalm. He would have no ability to recognize the true grandeur of creation were it not for the Torah, and he would not have been able to appreciate the supposed fastidiousness of the Torah were it not for the precision he saw in the heavens. And so what God has put together in this psalm, creation and scripture, let no human pull apart.